Hi, welcome to the Boston Roll Channel. I'm your host, Brian Koval. Before we get started, make sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons. If you want to see me play your favorite deck or your spicy brew on the channel, I take donation deck lists. I'll do a deck tech, play a full Magic Online League, and help tune your list. If that sounds good, check out my contact info. It's in the video description below. Now let's go play some Magic. Welcome to the Boston Roll Channel. Today I'm playing Legacy, and this is a donation deck from David. And David has me playing Esper Vile. This is kind of a wild deck. Um, it's one that I've been aware of for a while, but haven't tried myself, and I'm very excited for the opportunity. So basically, this is a prison deck that is Esper. It, it's it's a lot like Death and Taxes in its macro game plan. In uh, you're trying to put creatures into play that gain small advantages or deny small edges to your opponent and then you have enough of them that you can just attack for two with a lot of things at the same time so uh mostly a prison deck it's gonna feel kind of like a combo deck if we get up to the top end so aether vial the deck is named after this this is the the main card that ties the room together here and the creatures include charming prince got some flicker effects here meddling mage this is one of your prison elements. Baleful Strix, card draw, board control. Peacekeeper is basically moat. Recruiter of the guard, four of. Searches for every card in the deck. Or every creature in the deck, anyway. Uh, th this is your, your toolbox. One Flicker Wisp, more flickering. Here's your removal. One Hall Breacher, one Plague Engineer. Soul Herder. I'm kind of obsessed with Soul Herder, just as a magic card. This, uh... The ability is so cool. The inevitability is amazing. The art's incredible. Like I love this card. I'm excited we get to play with it. Palace Jailer to be the monarch. Venser to bounce stuff. Uh, cure what ails you. Kind of like a counter spell too in a tight spot. And of course, legacy spells, force of will, brainstorm, and swords to plowshares all together. And then uh, the sideboard. We have more specific monsters for specific situations, including Gilded Drake. This card was very popular when I started playing Legacy in like 2009. Uh, it, it was technology against show and tell, like they show in em Emrakul and you just trade. Uh, but this Esper Vile is the home where this card has landed. Then some more interactive spells and some classic uh, sideboard cards like Rest in Peace and Surgical. So that's the deck and Basically, we're going to have to take every match as it goes, like turn by turn, and name the right cards with Meddling Mage and gain incremental card advantage and eventually bury opponents and lock them out, or we lose. Uh, that's how this is going to go. There are not going to be any quick matches. This is, You are going to get your money's worth if you sit through this league, so let's get into this. I'm in luck, team. My opening hand has Aether Vial in it, so I'm going to keep. I'm pretty sure that you just want Aether Vial over everything. Uh, at least in the blind, like game one on the play, not knowing the matchup. I would keep most hands with Aether Vial in them. Uh, this hand is pretty well set up against fair decks. Like I have some a bunch of removal, basically. And that's what's going on. So I'm going to fetch my basic. I guess I should start to figure out my colors. I'm pretty sure black is the splash color. Like this is, is this a blue white deck splashing black or a blue black deck splashing white? And it's clearly a blue white deck. We have Flicker Wisp, Sky Cave Apparition, Alice Jailer, all costing double white. Uh, there's one. There's five black cards in the main deck, so yeah, I'm gonna get my island. Got I I try to figure that out because I don't wanna worry about underground sea if I don't have to. I don't wanna play into wasteland if I don't have to. And I also can't take too many long pauses to count cards in my deck like that because we're gonna need all the time. Alright, well, we're playing against Urza Echo, it looks like. So, pretty sure I just want to waste them. Right, they saw the Tundra in my hand. 
Um, Wasteland, when they didn't do anything on turn one anyway. And I have Vile ticking up, so it's not like the full double time walk. Yeah, that it's also Seed of the Synod, so that takes them off an artifact for Emery or Mox Opal as well. I like that. I have Plow for something like Psy or... Okay, I don't have Plow anymore. You got me. So now we're waiting for Skyclave Apparition to get up. Ooh, Prince. Uh, so I can Vile this in, so there's no reason to cast it. I'm probably going to want to hit my land drop with the Scry 2 ability on Charming Prince. Sigh, there he is. Let's see how many Thoppies they can make right now before I get a chance to do anything. But Plague Engineer mops up the Thoppies, I don't even care. Ooh. I kind of feel bad because they probably think this is really good. <laughs> Alright, so Vial in Charming Prince. I'm going to scry to. Right, oh, Recruiter is phenomenal. Uh, do I need the land? Because if I fetch, I lose my recruiter. I could just not fetch. Like, I'm not going to play Skyclave Apparition and... Alright. Top. I'll top both and just not crack my fetch land, probably. I'm a little worried about just being all in on Aether Vial, so I do want to hit my third land. There's probably a world where I could have double spelled. Like if I just bottomed the land, got the recruiter, got some two drop, uh, that might have been better. I'm going to do this now before. Uh, before they have mana up to sacrifice Thopters and draw cards. They've seen Skyclave Apparition. They've seen Venser. They are in a pretty awkward spot right now. They can definitely still win, but it's not it's not smooth. So if they Karn me here, I have the apparition for it, and they've seen the apparition. So they know Karn isn't safe. Yeah, I mean, still gonna do it. Oh, I guess they could get Lion's Eye Diamond and Echo right now and get rid of... Okay. I think I can handle that. Alright, so I draw the Recruiter. Uh, no counter on this, not for a long time. I guess if they have Force of Will in their hand, this could be a problem. Uh, Scrubland brings it all together here. Alright, they didn't have the Force. So let's get, get rid of Karn because that turns Aether Vial back on. I could have gotten rid of Psy and attacked Karn. Oh, that's probably better. What am I even doing? <laughs> yeah, I should I should have gotten rid of Psy and attacked Karn. Psy wasn't on my radar. I was thinking, like, I could get Karn or I could get Chalice, but yeah, I should have obviously just got Psy. Whoops. Alright, we'll figure out how to play Magic someday. A Ballista for two. Uh, yeah, I don't have a response to that specifically. Right, Ballista does jack up a lot of what I want to do. 
Like it means I can't just go get Soul Herder and go off with Recruiter. But I can get something. Overture, Flicker Wisp. And Flicker Wisp does outright kill uh, Ballista. I could get Prince, but that's too easy to answer. Um, could just get Apparition. I think I want Flicker Wisp, just as something that can take out a... Though I am holding Venser. Oh, they're just conceding. All right. That's also a strategy. Uh, you can uh, fart around in your deck long enough for them to give up. Deal. Okay, so against Urza Echo, I want my Hall Breachers. Lavinia seems incredible. Uh, Plague Engineer. I don't know how many of those I actually want, but it is a good card. A Force of Negation's probably good. I'm not sure how many I actually need, but probably some number. And Rest in Peace has a lot of application, like... Uh, Knocking off Emery and the Echo combo, at least in flashback mode, are both pretty good. So what cards are less good in this matchup? And I would say that Baleful Strix is definitely one of them. Uh, Peacekeeper, probably not where this game's going to go. Palace Jailer against the 4x Hall Breacher plus some number of Narset deck can take a break. Uh, yeah, Skyclave Apparition is my only answer to a Chalice of the Void, other than counter spells. So that that's pretty important. Getting Aether Vial into play versus not getting Aether Vial into play is a huge deal. Uh, yeah, Flake Engineer is good. Venser is good. Yeah, I think some small number of Strix can go, but I do have to actually win the game at some point, which is the tricky part. Uh, Flicker Wisp kills uh, Construct Tokens, also blanks Chalice. Ooh, flickering a Chalice is insane against them, because uh, they their deck is full of zeros. I don't think I can cut a land. Maybe I can cut one Soul Herder at the top end. That's kind of a grindy engine for this combo matchup. Gives me another Force. I have a lot of blue cards to go with my forces. All right, so the rest in peace. Can I fit rest in peace in here? And do I care? Are the remaining questions. Like I could cut a prince, but I, I'm getting kind of skinny on two drops, and I don't want to like take my first game action on turn three. All right, I'm gonna pass on the rest in peace and just do this. I would bring in Rest in Peace before I bring in Surgical Extraction in this matchup, and I just didn't have room for for either. Um, well, I'm likely to resolve an Aether Vial. I'll keep. Ooh, just pass the turn, huh? Oh, JK, they changed their mind. All right, some creatures and lands are both good here. All right, didn't even fight over it. Cool. We're going for a spin. Is this Emery? It's Chalice. Um, so my Aether Vial's in. I'm not going to fight over Chalice. I would have done it on turn one, but now I can use these counter spells to keep myself alive. And I can eventually flicker or ignore the chalice. Probably some something I'm forcing this turn. Is it Urza or Karn? Ballista for two. Um it's kind of a tilt because that can just beat me by itself. I'm not excited about this force, but I do think I need to do it.
I don't think I'll force back if they force back. Like I would just take my my trade there. Uh, the prince, welcome. So prince can scry to. Uh oh, where is this coming? How sick would it be to violin meddling mage here, using the city trigger to get priority? But that's not what's happening. Yeah, this has got to be Urza. Or three mana? Okay, yeah, no, okay, yeah. Urza confirmed. All right, so if I can scry into a Flicker Wisp, that would be insane. Uh, I should fetch before I scry in case I want both cards and there's shuffling involved. Let's go. Scry me a river. So, oh, Flicker Wisp or Recruiter. All right, Skyclave Apparition plays. Um, I'm going to bottom Flooded Strand. Top this. So I think I want to exile Chalice of the Void and then uh, plow Urza. I should have attacked with Charming Prince first. They probably just block with Construct. Take the Chalice. Ooh, tricks. I'll move into combat to knock out this floating mana. All Breacher, huh? My deck doesn't really draw cards. Theirs does, though. Alright, I'm gonna plow Urza. I still have Force if I need to answer. Uh, I think I'm better off blocking than attacking. I'm the control deck here. They have more power in play. I'm more happy to trade off. All right, they're hellbent. They do have a 4-4, four, four, though. I'm just going to take 4. Uh, any land with Venser clears this thing. I could also just take Vile up if it becomes a huge problem. I'm going to leave it on 3, though. Fencer is the only four in the deck. And this makes any land or creature a good draw. Like so. Alright, so I'm going to attack with both of my creatures. Uh, so... Oh, they're going to draw an extra card with Bobble. So I could Venser right now when I know I can answer the token, or I can like play with, play with Fire. I'm going to play with Fire. So if they attack, and I jump in Venser, Bounce Construct, trade with Hallbreacher, sounds pretty good. Okay. This gets blown out by Force of Will. But that's not a card they can cast. Ah, uh, they knew better. Okay. Smart. Oh, I do have Aether Vile in play. It's not like they were just playing blind. <laughs> I was like, why wouldn't they attack? But yeah, Vile obviously represents a large amount of scary things. Uh, I think, given that information, I'm just going to take four again. Because if their last card in hand is Echo, I really need to counter it. And now in the end step, they can't stop that. I 
you're out of here. So my hand is Force of Will. A land lets me cast Force. A creature lets me play Magic. They know the top card. They know both cards in my hand between the the Mishra's Bobble last turn and the Urza's Bobble now. So they have perfect information. Uh, that card is not bad. Uh, I'm gonna attack with everything, and then flicker Apparition and take out Hallbreacher. I get to do this pretty cleanly because uh, it, there's a zero under the apparition. All right, so they get a zero, come back in, take Hall Breacher. All right, so now Echo is a fair Echo, but I am running on empty here. This is a medium scary Urza. Like, Urza's always scary, but Construct not being huge. All right, it's huge now. <laughs> and it's great, because I couldn't force that anyway, so I don't feel bad. All right, so I can always know to this triggered ability and always yield to this triggered ability. My only four drops already in play. Ugh. <laughs> I was going to say, unless I draw Caracas, which I did immediately. So I can bounce and redeploy Venser and then attack for six. That sounds pretty good. I'm not going to bounce Urza because that's better in their hand in a lot of ways. Get that out of here. All right, take four. So now they are, they can spin Urza a few times at least. Uh, they have four, five, six, seven, eight, nine mana, 10 mana. So they can spin Urza twice if they want to, which I assume is what they're going to do, because what are you waiting for? All right, here it is, all in. I can just Caracas Urza for the win if they whiff here. Ooh, that's pretty reasonable. Yeah, that, that's not a bad hit. So if they... This will give them another turn. Unfortunately for them, all my creatures that they can't... Oh, wait, because I have Vile. So the thing they would want to bounce most, that would give them a creature. Okay, yeah, nice. Survive that one. Next round. I'm on the draw with a double Vile hand. Keep it. That means it's twice as good. First appearance of Brainstorm in the league as well. Didn't need it. Just played Death and Taxes style. Snow-covered forest. I do recognize this name. I'm not sure why, but they, they said good luck, Brian. So <laughs> good luck to you, too. Uh, so basic forest. Uh, Enchantress probably would have done something on turn one. Um, I don't know. This basic forest is weird. It's more likely they're just some like boring Uro deck. But let's let's see what they got. Good thing we have two. Aether vial secret text proactively destroy target Jace the Mind Sculptor. Yeah, uh, I, I definitely think this is some sort of boring Uro deck now. And by boring, I just mean compared to Enchantress or something awesome like that. Like, whatever, it's all good. All right, Hallbreacher's going to have to save me from that.
another one. I probably should have brainstormed. That was loose. <laughs> I just got so excited I get to jam Aether Vial. Yeah, brainstorming, turning at least one of these lands into something else, then fetch Aether Vial is definitely the, the play there. <laughs> womp womp. After last match where we never drew a brainstorm, I just was playing like it's death in Texas. Let's go. Get Aether Vial into play. That's the only thing that matters. And I didn't even play around days because they don't have any islands. I should prepare for back to basics out of this deck though. Look what they're up to. Alright. Yes. Draw. Ooh, Force of Will is not bad. That lets me get my Hall Breacher in. I'm going to take a bunch of actions in their upkeep. Uh, so if I'm respecting back to basics, I should play this card. I could wait a turn and meddling mage swords to plowshares and then do out all of this stuff. Ooh, this is a tough call. I'm g I'm just going. Let's go. Sylvan Library is going to bury me. Oh, this could be uh, Bant Miracles. Like, they could just brainstorm into a Terminus here. Yeah, so Hall Breacher, the, the wording on Hall Breacher, if an opponent would draw a card except the first one they draw in each of their draw steps, that's in a lot of ways harsher than Leovold or Narset, but it's currently a lot better or, or for them because they like if they cast Brainstorm and then Leovold or Narset resolve, uh, they wouldn't get that draw for their, for their turn, but because of how Hall Breacher works, they did get it. So if they don't have a Hull Breacher too, that would be a huge blowout. All right, so I don't think I need this second Aether Vial. Caracas is going to be good at some point. Uh, but let's see, Plague Engineer. I can name Snake. All right, so I'm going to put Vial and Marsh Flats on top. Play Caracas and cast Plague Engineer. Or I'm going to Vile in Meddling Mage, name Swords to Plowshares. And then I can force a Terminus and Engineer on Snake. They're thinking about plowing in response. Because this is where you would do that if it's going to happen. Swords to plowshares. Engineer on snick. Alright, so Snapcaster Mage is a blowout, but I think I checked most of my boxes here. Yep. Straight through the Declare Blocker step. Force of Will for the Terminus lined up. We're basically all in, though. Like, if, if they do manage to, like, land Supreme Verdict here. Alright, they did have the Terminus. So if they don't have the Counterspell. This is the plan I lined up. Is it good enough? One of us is dead right now.
How'd we do? Ooh, it's in the graveyard. Okay. Guess they could like Uro to gain some life. Uh, but I get a treasure off of that and they don't draw their card. Yeah, this is the the strength of of this deck. Just little squeeze, little squeeze, little squeeze, and then suddenly they're in a big squeeze. Uh, I guess like Jace could bounce a creature and make them not dead anymore. But Vile's going up to three, so if they bounce Hall Breacher, I can flash it in instant uncounterable for the rest of the game. All right, it is Uro for the game three life mode. No card. Treasure for me. Yeah, it's a, a desperate play, but it does keep them alive. Yes, draw. It's awkward that I'm going to have to play my land because I would like to bluff something with my Aether Vial, but knowing that I have another dead card on top uh, it means that I do need this shuffle, so I'm going to make the correct play. Making the correct play is almost always better than bluffing when the bluff costs you something. Alright, library is on the stack, and a terminus is not above it. The Caracas can answer the 6-6 body of Uro, which is the hard part right now. And land Supreme Verdict is a beating, uh, then I would be hoping to draw Recruiter of the Guard. Alright, we did it. We pinched in all the right places. I hope their hand is just for Ice Fang Coatles. Okie dokie. So, uh, Swords to Plowshares, not super important. Opposition Agent. Is this an Opposition Agent matchup? Probably not. I'm not even sure why this card's in the deck. This card is bad. Uh, I guess you bring it in against like Elves or Maverick. Uh, Hall Breacher, very good. So I want Hall Breacher. Do I want Rest in Peace? Or surgical. I want at least one answer to Uro. Probably don't want Peacekeeper. In Flicker Wisp and Venser are also, and Caracas are all soft answers to Uro. Like they still get to do their chugga chugga, like gain three draw cards thing. Uh, Skyclave Apparition is solid, um, except against Terminus. Like them Terminusing, and then you get. Like, they get to sweep your board and get leave, like, somewhere between 2 and 8 power in play afterwards is bad. Uh, but I think answering their permanence in a deck like this is pretty important. So, like, one rip or one surgical, are those sort of things important? Uh, I guess Lavinia, actually... to make it cost less than the number. Yeah, so Lavinia turns off Terminus for a very long time. But Terminus and Force of Will. But that's about all she does, right? They don't have any free Well they 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 can never pitch to Force. It turns off Force of Will completely and turns off Terminus for a while. Um I want one more Force of Negation because Terminus is just the most important card. Is that a reason to have all my Force of Negations. I don't know, I really don't like having that many Forces in fair matchups, but they're doing something unfair in the form of Terminus. Alice Jailer is kind of dangerous against Ice Fang Coatl specifically. So I could cut Jailer. Though that is a really good card to dig for. Maybe it's Charming Prince. So I bring these in. Do I want another Plague Engineer on Snake? If so, where does it co come from? 
All right, I just sort of did that because I have 10 seconds left to think about it, <laughs> but uh, I think Strix is a good card in the matchup, and I just cut two two drops, and I don't like thinning out my curve that much, but it is what it is. Okay, so no Aether Vial. First play is a three drop. Don't even have a blue card for force. I'm going to mulligan this. Um, this is basically the same situation, except now I have the blue card. Oh, it's just getting worse. All right. <laughs> I'm not going to go to four, though, against this control deck. All right. I will gamble that I'll draw a land before turn three. All right, so we've been pretty lucky so far. All of our opening hands contained at least one Aether Vial. <laughs> Cannot lose. Uh, this, this deck does start to become kind of clunky if you don't have the Vial. But there it is. Uh, our hand is still a little awkward, but my opponent is not going to come out the gates fast. Like, Sylvan Library is the card that they can play on turn two that really jacks me up. So drawing a land would be pretty nice. Is being able to cast a Hull Breacher to pressure them, and then also... Like, uh, like casting a Hall Breacher next turn to buy time until I can violin the second Hall Breacher, which I don't think they would play around the second one. So land's pretty important off the top here. I don't regret bottoming the land from the mulligan, especially since I drew Aether Vial, but uh, it is still important to hit the third land when your hand and your deck are full of three drops. Ooh, no attack. bummer all right well we're all set up assuming this aether vial is still in play in a turn oh you have this card too okay Uh, to ferry, that is a problem. All right, if this to ferry resolves, I think the game is over. All right, good. Yikes. Ooh, that's hot. Okay, so yeah, you don't attack with your hull breacher here. Not on into a violent two. I have nothing, though. All right, now I have everything. So I should use this mana to do something in my upkeep. So I want planes and underground sea, scrubland. Yeah, double white is the important thing here. Uh, most of my double blue spells, it's just Fencer for double blue. So yeah, Scrubland is the, the one that completes my colors here. And then I'm going to... Oh, I should have done nothing. Whoops. Yeah, because having... I guess doing nothing just tells them I have Hall Breacher, like straight up. Like, excuse me, I have Hall Breacher. But being able to violin Hall Breacher is pretty jacked up. Like hopefully I can snipe a brainstorm here. Or a Jace activation. Oh my god. And if they just do nothing, I have Recruiter instead. Let's see if they brainstorm in response to either while. Alright. They didn't. Now it's time to go bananas. So Swords to Plowshares is still pretty good here. If I get the Soul Herder, uh, nothing actually happens. Like, if they have... Uh, 
um, what am I what am I trying to say here? <laughs> if they have uh, swords to plowshares. All right, I'm gonna get flicker wisp instead because that I can use uh, at instant speed to save things from other things. Do you want to trade Ice Fang Koala for Recruiter? I mean, you might. This is not a bad deal. Okay, do I want to trade Ice Fang Koala for Recruiter? I think I do. Like, I, I'm comfortable offering this trade. Like, uh, I'm going to have to be able to attack through that Koala eventually. So now I have two things I can deploy at flash speed in the Hall Breacher and the Wisp. I could flicker their abundant growth to get a treasure with Hall Breacher. <laughs> that casts Vencer. I'm not doing that. That's not a real play, but it's a thing I could do. It's available to me. And I'm gonna Violin Hall Breacher. Maybe I should cast it. I'm trying to play around counter spells, but by casting it, I play into a removal spell. So kind of tricky. Yeah, I blew it. All right, fine. Yeah, if I had just cast Hall Breacher with my mana, that would have been a lot better for me. Ooh, all right. Yep, I blew it. I got this Flicker with specifically to protect my creatures from removal and then just decided not to do it. Well played, Brian. Good job. Okay, well, at least I can flicker the illusion token. So I'm not going to get beat down by that. I am not going to put a counter on Vile. That's pretty good, too. Force of Negation. So I can flicker my Strix and draw an extra card. Is that better or worse than flickering Illusion? And I get blown out by a removal spell, but I feel like that's going to be true most of the time. I'll pass into their upkeep and then... Now I'll let them figure it out. So, like, yeah, Flickering Strix, I think an extra card is worth more than removing their random 3-3 three, three right now. All right, Venser will reset the Uro. The life gain is not irrelevant. Time to pay attention to the clock because this game's going to go long. Yeah, so I think if I... Oh, back to basics. Uh, yeah, that's fine. I've played around that pretty well, this game. So they attack... Or not. Do they attack? Yeah, I guess you have to. So... I do think having an extra card... Is important. So I'll vial this in. I'll, I'm so dumb. I should have blocked. All right. What I should have done is blocked with Baleful Strix and then vial in to bounce it. And then I still have Flicker Wisp and Strix next turn. I'm not playing super well. This deck is hard, uh, but okay. I've removed the threat from play. I'm going to sit on this Caracas for a minute. Uh, the Back to Basics is good against Caracas. I really don't want to take my Vial up to 4, though. And I can hardcast Force of Negation this turn if that's something I'm interested in. Yeah, it would have felt a lot better if I attacked for 4. But I'm you don't win a race against Uro. That's just not a thing. 
Yuck. Uh, I don't think I'm winning this game without Aether Vial. And it's Uro time. All right, there you are. Hello, Uro. Yeah, without Back to Basics, I have Caracas Venser looping, but obviously they have Back to Basics, so. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not ready to tick up Vile. It's not time. I'm not going to trade with Snapcaster either, because if I draw Soul Herder, I need something to go off with. And if I'm not going to block, I should have attacked. So, a lot of important lessons being learned here. Soul Herder. All right, count it. So I can... Caracas. All right, I have a plan. Caracas. Vile. Yes. Charming Prince. Prince. Flicker. Recruiter. And I'm going to get Soul Herder with this. All right. So they have Uro and two mystery cards in their hand. This comes back. I get Soul Herder. Start trying to go off. I can take Vial up to four and bounce back to basics and reset my mana for a turn if I think that's something that's going to be important. If they can remove Vial, that's not a play anymore. I'm definitely like pretty hard stuck under back to basics if they can remove Vial. Yeah, this is just Uro coming back around. Fetching in response to the Uro trigger. So they don't want to draw a land? Is that what I'm supposed to read from that? Or, no, they pondered last turn. They did know that card. Okay, that's why they did that. Yeah, Jace... Jace is surprisingly not actually very good here. I mean, brainstorming your face off is always good, but like it's Jace is gonna get uh crunched by my creatures. So is it time? Uh no, because I literally just made this play to get Soul Herder in my hand last turn. So it's not time to take up file. Oh, maybe it is next turn. So I'm going to attack Jace with everything. If they want to save Jace, they have to trade with Prince. And if they want to break up my Soul Herder chain, they have to lose Jace by blocking Recruiter of the Guard. So they're in kind of a tough spot here. Okay, they've made their choice. Yes, put in Soul Herder. End of turn, flicker this, yes. All right, so if they stacked a Terminus, uh, this can be a tough spot we're in. Um, unfortunately, I can't get Lavinia into play right now. And also they have more than six lands, so it doesn't matter. I think I wanna get another recruiter just in case they Reset. Yeah, if this is Terminus, then I'm gl I'll am i be glad I got Recruiter. Yep, all right. They made the play that makes sense. <laughs> you got me. We got one Soul Herder trigger. Count it. Put it on record. 
So they're going to get back Uro this turn, so I think it is time to tick Bile up to four. Which is a little dangerous, because if they have Ice Fang, Quaddle... So, like, I could tick Vile up to four and Venser them. Just, like, Venser back to basics, but I'm pretty sure I just want to Palace Jailer the Uro. Which will get absolutely blown out by Snapcaster Mage or... Ice Fang Coatl. But if I don't answer the Uro, like I need to use Venser on back to basics so I can reset my my Caracas and get the loop going. Oh, they have so many cards in their hand. Yeah, if I draw a land and I'm able to recruit, that changes things a little. Okay, this mana does not cast Ice Fang Coatl. I don't know if they have a land drop still. I've lost track. Okay, so they can't cast Coatl with the mana they have. That means I'm going for it. Yes. Yes, 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 let's go. I am the Monarch. And I'll take that arrow, please. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, these two lands don't cast the two drop I drew. But I have established a Monarchy. That can't get a basic land. And Uro is in exile for now. And even if they take the Monarch and get their Uro back, it'll go to the graveyard and then they have to loop back around. Oh no, <laughs> that's bad. All right, in, in some trouble now. I'm going to need a Skyclave Apparition to get rid of back to basics and play the game now. But I am the Monarch. There are There's just one of each basic, so I can't fetch Swamp with Flooded Strand, so I'm going to have to fetch something else. All right, so I'm going to attack Jace. If they ambush Palace Jailer with a creature, that means that creature's not attacking me and stealing the Monarch. Let's see if they even block. Okay. I think it will depend on if they have another flash threat. All right, so there's no basic I can get here. So I'm just gonna pick a random non-basic and cast recruiter. So Recruiter can block Snapcaster Mage, if that's their flash threat. Uh, Coatl is a blowout. I need to get the Apparition and set up for removing back to basics. Uh-oh, they have a Coatl. Yeah, they needed to have two of those for that attack, that block to make sense. Because, like, letting Jace die in exchange for not only becoming the Monarch, but taking the Monarch from me, I would definitely have... If you only have one Coatl, you should take the Monarch and just let Jace die there. At least that is how I would play the game. Ooh. Just going in here. Maybe I can deck them. <laughs> I found my basic Swamp. So, we're in business. Uh, when they take the Monarch back, Uro comes back into play, and they get an Uro trigger, and they actually have a full graveyard to, to jam it. 
So pretty scary stuff. Yeah, I think we have lost this game, but winning's going to take a little while. And I do technically have outs. Like if this apparition somehow resolves. And back to basics goes, and I can play the game. This abundant growth has been reasonable. I tested that card and it was not good. I wonder how many how many they play. Like if I mean there do appear to be four cards, four colors in this deck, so they are still snow going. Alright, five cards in hand. Pretty good chance of a force of will, I would guess. If depending on how many they still have in the deck, they've cast zero so far this game. Like, if they are just trying to overpower me on the stack with one-for-one -one answers, which I think is a reasonable plan, uh, then they might not even have Force of Will at this point. The bad news is... I am, like, all in on this play working. Because Pluto Delta can get my Basic Swamp, but Basic Swamp doesn't cast Skyclave Apparition. So if I get Tundra, commit the Tundra to the... Like, this has to work, basically. But I don't think I'm winning a game where I don't do this. Like, Baleful Strix doesn't play on this board in a way that matters. Yeah. I'm committing to... I'm going to play to win. With their seven cards in hand. Oh, we're in there. And they probably play two back to basics, so it's not even like... This matters a lot. They probably just hooked me right into that. All right, nine, ten. They're attacking for ten next turn. All right, this game will end pretty quickly, at least. Though, if I if I do untap my lands, I have Caracas for the Uro that takes a lot of pressure off. Uh, Venser for the Illusion or Strix, yeah. Oak Tamer Priest, so that makes twelve damage. You have more flash threats. Them playing Containment Priest is interesting because now if I like Flicker Wisp one of their creatures or Flicker one of their creatures, it's gone forever. So Priest is scary. I mean, they should have it. My deck is based on putting creatures into play without casting them. So makes sense. All right, they're plusing Jace on themselves, uh, which probably makes sense because like I, I like I said a few minutes ago maybe I can deck them and that was only kind of a joke because the monarch forces a draw Uro entering the battlefield or attacking forces a draw and the deck doesn't have a lot of actual win conditions like ways to deal damage so there's there's some play here And Caracas can buy a ton of time. Like, once the arrow's back in their hand, if they want to replay it, it's another draw. Oh, this is the other back to basics. <laughs> Alright. You got me. Alright, um... I'm just gonna let them attack me. Uh, so, basically, all right, I'll just concede. I'm dead. Uh, the Making the play, I could, probably could have made them put another, like, 30 to 50 seconds on their clock, which, I mean, if it was a PTQ, I would probably do. But it's not, so I'm, I'm going to chill. A Gilded Drake. Um... I don't think... I mean, stealing a row is pretty exciting. Opposition agent is, like, medium to low. Uh, Strix does seem more important than I gave it credit for. All of my answers to back to basics are, in fact, in the deck. So, it's not getting any better than that. Maybe this force of negation isn't good. And it's pretty hard castable so like there there becomes a point where you're just holding up three mana and vile 
So that's pretty good. Maybe Palace Jailer is bad. Like I, I knew they had Coatl from game one, but we didn't see Snapcaster until game two. They have a lot of flash threats. So maybe I just can't afford to risk being the Monarch. And I should try to just win the game. Though, rest in peace. Now that I know they have Snapcaster and Uro, rest in peace becomes more interesting, but it doesn't impact the board directly. I mean, Swords to Plowshare is still not really what I want to be doing. Yeah, so I've seen Snapcaster, Coatl, and Uro in the deck. Like, they don't have black, so they're not going to have, like, Leovold. Probably one plow is still somehow the right number. Uh, I think that game where I lost it was where I, like, took that Flicker Wisp line and then just didn't use the Flicker Wisp correctly and ended up getting picked apart by removal when I took a line specifically to dodge removal. So uh, if I just play better, that will help. <laughs> Surprise. So if I have Rest in Peace, is Swords of Blasher is actually helpful. In Plow does help punch through blockers. This is actually really hard because mostly it's hard that I don't know what I want to take out because all of the cards serve an important purpose and it's a tutor deck, so even like a random one of is, is still good. Alright, I think that Rest in Peace is probably better than Lavinia. It seems like they boarded out their Force of Wills anyway, and Meddling Mage can name Terminus, which is this like better than Lavinia because they will end up with a million lands in play. Oh, look at this. Let's get back to basics. All right. Uh, my opponent said they are super laggy and reopen moto. Good luck. Yeah, I mean, it is difficult to win with uh, an RO deck in seven minutes anyway. Hey, hey. what do I do with this? Um, I could just, like, vial it in in response to uh, Terminus in the future, or I could just put it into play now. All right, let's just turn off those swords to plowshares. Like I, I could have named Ponder or Brainstorm with this, but uh, plow is more important. Ooh, that sucks. Been there. You keep the island Ponder hand in your like twenty-two land control deck and just miss. I feel you, opponent. But that does mean their hand is seven spells. Oh, I was about to cast Soul Herder, but then we found Hull Breacher, and this hand's going to need a cantrip to survive. There it is. That's the game, folks. Ho, 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 ho. I said there weren't going to be any quick ones, but now there are. On to the next round. All right, I'm on the play in round three with a one lander with no vial. It does have brainstorm. Uh, can I count on that? Probably not. Like This would have to fetch Tundra, then I brainstorm. I don't know. I I'm going to keep this. Like... Do you maul to Aether Vial? Like, this is a functional legacy hand. Let's go. If the Brainstorm doesn't work, I'm going to lose. <laughs> but whatever. And maybe they're a, a combo deck. Maybe they're Oops All Spells and I have double force. Stranger things have happened. Ooh. Okay. Um, I probably do want to force that. Mostly because uh, a deck like theirs is not is going whatever they're doing it's going to require some setup, and that is one of the best setup cards. 
All right, brainstorm. Find Fetchland Aether Vial. Oh, fuck. Well, I found half of the things I wanted. We're in hard mode. Please don't have Wasteland. So if there are black green depths, they could actually just have Wasteland. All right, well, I have all my colors. Great. Oh, what the shit? Elvish Reclaimer Hogak? Is this a thing? Oh god. I should have hid the Aether Vial on top. I should have done that against Black Green Depths anyway. Because that's the most important card I have. Will they name Aether Vial against it? Oh, I did pitch Meddling Mage. Shit. This is bad. They're probably going to name Force of Will or Aether Vial, both of which are in my hand. I messed this up. Oh, cool. They named Plow. Good. So they're planning to make Merit Lage. And I get to sneak my Aether Vial in. Okay, so this is Hogak Depths. I have heard of this deck. I haven't played against it in a very long time, if at all. They do know I have Double Force now, though, so the next Cabal Therapy is going to be a banger. So Depths... Hex Mage wins the game here. Oh, well, I forced the Hex Mage, of course. Yeah, so the Depths doesn't win the game. They know I'm empty, though. And being at 17 is exactly the wrong number, because... If I could go to 21, if I was at 18, that could bridge the gap into Flicker Wisp. But if they have depths here, I'm just going to lose. Oh, that's not depths. Um, crop rotation also does it here, though. So maybe I should vial in Prince before I draw and get my Scry too. Yeah, I like that. Find me a plow. Okay. Um, this counters the crop rotation and bridges the gap into Flicker Wisp, so I'll get at least one more turn here. Okay. Interesting. They're going beat down. So, discard spell? Oh, oh, wait, that casts Hogak. That's what they've done. I get it. That's cool. Super sweet. So if they go for Hogak here, if I force Gak, then I'm turning the corner into this, like, Recruiter of the Guard Flicker Wisp chain. Yeah, I think I want to force Gak. Five, one, two, three, four, five. It'll take a little while to rebuild that. Ooh. Changing their mind. They did see me just keep a card and still miss my land drop, so they, they're probably assuming that Swords to Plowshares is what I have. Which is a reasonable guess. So, Ogak... I, there is another Soul Herder in the deck that I can get eventually. All right. Yeah, I can recruit for the other Soul Herder. I just need to not be dead to this 8 power creature, this 8-8 eight, eight in the meantime. Oh, bummer. They tricked me. Immediately had the, the Hogak. And they picked up a Depths for their trouble as well. Okay. Their deck is super cool. Uh, that could play. It's not time to attack yet, I'm fairly certain. And I don't have any one-drops to search up. 
The Palace Jailer is pretty good. So they can cast Hogak here and still threaten Depths. I like it. I mean, I don't like that it's happening to me, but I like the deck. I appreciate what they're up to. Big fan. Okay, Recruiter of the Guard. Yes. So, uh, I basically just have to leave up everything all the time. Like, there's no window where I can get Soul Herder here. I think I just want to get Strix to maximize my chance to do two things next turn. Alright, so, got there. All right, so that can trade with Hogak. And the Flicker Wisp is still hanging out if they ever try to make Merit Lage. Yep, block. Touch. It takes seven, but I got a lot of life to work with. So let me see if I can flicker my recruiter here and still have a chance. One target, non-land, non-token. All right, that doesn't do it. Um, Venser is in the deck. Oh, and I'm literally holding Palace Jailer. So I'm going to flicker my recruiter. All right, so this might let them think it's safe to merit lage. Um, I think I want to get soul herder. I'm going to tick up vial and just hope to draw a land, I think is the plan here. Easy money. All right, get in for my three flying. I don't think they're going to make Merrill Age in my main phase and let me answer it at sorcery speed. All right, let's go. Uh... This enters the battlefield under its own. All right, it's not tapped or anything. So Flicker Wisp can mess with their stuff. Uh, I think Recruiter. I'm just going to take the easy, the obvious choice. Yes. Yes, so I'm not going to get Venser because I don't want them to see that I can answer Merit Lage. Oh, maybe I should have, though. Uh, I am going to get Venser, actually, because if they set up a, a game where they make Merit Lage and protect it with Sejuri Step, Palace Jailer doesn't actually beat it, but Venser can bounce the actual land. Like, I can let them copy, let them sack the legend, then in response to the Merit Lage trigger, bounce. Then they don't get the 2020 at all. Yeah, if I flickered Flicker Wisp instead of Recruiter, I would have been able to do this a little differently. Because I would have had a, a flying blocker to mess around with. Oh, Colony Garden. Watch out for that. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, so I'm going to jail the Reclaimer, probably. Oh, no, I'm going to jail Hogak. One, two, three, four, five, six. They're one short of Hogak. Yeah, I thought I just counted that, and it didn't add up. All right.
Yes, Palace Jailer. Take Reclaimer. Ooh, Trigger Soul Herder. <laughs> I would have missed that in real life. Tricky stuff. Alright, that was a weird game, but we did it somehow. The fourth plow's coming in. Surgical and Rip both come in. Apparition do doesn't answer Hogak or Merit Lage, so I probably... I'm actually not even sure if I want that or not. Uh, it's good against the Reclaimer part of the deck. And Path to Exile's coming in. They demonstrated their willingness to... Um, Cabal Therapy Swords to Plowshares, which obviously makes a lot of sense. Um, Hull Breacher is not important to this matchup. Apparition and Gilded Drake are in the maybe piles. I don't think I want two Drakes. Probably zero. So, Plague Engineer. They did have a lot of X1s, but I don't know if I would ever search this up and want to use it. Uh, Strix is good. Mage is, like, fine. Jailer and Venser are both excellent. Peacekeeper is excellent. Wow, Peacekeeper. Alright, so I gotta cut two more cards. Where are they coming from? I don't think I can cut Recruiter. Uh, I, I've been shaving on Prince a lot. In Esper Vile as experts, tell me if that's wrong. Uh, but that just seems like one of the more cuttable cards. Also, meddling mage in this particular matchup. Like, I guess I name abrupt decay or crop rotation much of the time, but they have so many different things. Or I can name Hogak himself, but I think I'd rather just draw one of these hard answers to Hogak than a meddling mage to name Hogak with, because I'm bringing in four cards that just hard answer Hogak. So that's a slightly different direction to go and I think it's a better one. And then, do I want this Skyclave Apparition in the deck? And if so, what's getting cut? I don't want to go any lower on twos, because I, you do need activity, like action, in the game. A Meddling Mage is super medium. All right, I, I think Apparition, like I've maxed out all my ways to interact with their combo, so now I need to make sure I don't lose to their board. And I think that Skyclave Apparition helps me do that. All right, I don't know if these things are correct, but they are well-reasoned, and that's enough for me. All right, this hand is weird, but Wasteland shuts down Depths, and Surgical shuts down Hogak, so I'm actually going to keep this. I might just lose if they just curve out, like, Reclaimer into some other shit. Oh, Thoughtseize is good. Can't take Wasteland, though. Yeah, th this is a weird hand, but uh, somehow very good. And I, I just need to draw White Source, and it's bananas. I'm going to crack off this Wasteland, by the way. Like Basically, no matter what I drew there, I was cracking off the Wasteland. They're not getting turned two depths on my watch. Colony Garden, you can have that. Uh, I'll play the Swamp. There's there's not really anything to bluff from this position. Like, they can't make Merit Lage from Colony Garden on board. They would need, like, four Spirit Guides and a Crop Rotation. Two crop rotation. I don't even know. I don't think it can be done. All right, like four lotus petals and crop rotation. I guess could do it. Oh, there's crop rotation. This is probably just to get like Bayou to play the game with, would be my guess. Or they could get another Urborg and play Hex Mage. Okay, they're going for the Gak, which they did not find. Mercifully. All right, deck. Time for a land. Uh, blue or white land, please. Or both. We'll take it. So I could... I think I just want to get basic planes and use Prince to scry to. Because I've seen a wasteland in their deck, and we're both playing this like low-resource game right now. 
I'm going to prioritize stability. And that... That's fine. That that will have to fetch a non-basic if I want blue mana, but getting Soul Herder into play with Charming Prince is pretty messed up. Woof. Still no Gak. Alright, there's Depths. So I can Wasteland the Depths, or I can just ignore it. I think I'm going to ignore it. Like, they can't make Merit Lage this turn. Let's just get the engine online. And I have both a an answer to Merit Lage in play and Merit Lage uh, as a, a land. So I do want, I don't think I want that. I do want this land. That's the stable blue source I'm looking for. And next turn I can play Strix and waste, and use Wasteland and still hold up Path to Exile. This is lining up pretty well. <laughs> We're getting GG's in the chat already. I think that that Wasteland out of me surprised them. Yeah, they're, they're saying exactly what I said when I kept the hand of they lost when I drew my colored mana after that start, but yeah, uh, I play a lot of lands in the deck, and the cards that matter in the matchup are Wasteland and Surgical, and it worked. So, on to the next round. I'm on the draw here with kind of a stinker, but it does have Force of Will, just in case. So I'm on the draw, and I have Charming Prince to scry. I'm actually going to keep this. This is all for science. Like, it's pro. Like, I don't know how hard you're supposed to mulligan for the cards that you want in this deck. But, I mean, I, I think that turn two Charming Prince, scry two, look for some action, and being on the draw is all fine. And I do like the upside of having Force of Will on the draw against random decks. This is going to turn out to be like Rug Delver, where Force of Will is actively terrible. Just wait. It's coming. Yep. Rug Delver confirmed. That also means that I probably don't want to fetch into this Flooded Strand. Or this uh wooded foothills i don't think i want to waste them either like i am the i'm the control deck i'm gonna want my mana more than they are like they're probably gonna try to you know daze and waste me out of this game all right scry two uh Bottom and one of the best cards. Alright, so I'm on board. Yeah, there's their wasteland. No surprise there. Okay, and they're still holding up Stifle. So, what I'm going to do is just hang this. Uh, Flooded Strand out there, and make them hold up Stifle forever. Because I don't have a play to make anyway, and I have lots of lands to drop. So if they want to play under like permanent Rashad and Port by holding up Stifle, they can do that. Sure. Another waste. like true name nemesis or some shit probably tarmogoyf oh sylvan library it's one of the few cards worth a force of will in this matchup 
But I bet they're going to agree. If they have a force, they're going to force back. Uh, spell pierce. They can spell pierce me into daze, but that becomes like a pretty... So they're going to double daze me and hit me with a stifle. Okay, uh, yeah, so they have the stifle pretty obviously here. I'm not going to play into it. Okay, so now they have Sylvan Library and no lands. I don't know what the top of my deck is right now. Yeah, I drew the Recruiter and I bottomed the other card up, Prince. So these are drawing wild. So I'll get a Plains and a Swamp with these two lands. Plains. Oh, fuck, Swamp's in my hand. <laughs> That's all right. Uh, I'm going to want them to use that Wasteland anyway. Like, I want them to use their Wasteland, then I want to be able to waste their land. They can't daze me right now. Alright, so do I get another Recruiter? Just keep the party going. Um, do I get something like Baleful Strix? I think I just get Soul Herder and, and just punch for the stars. I mean, this gets broken up by, like, Lightning Bolt. Like, basically anything breaks this up. Uh, they can also stifle the Soul Herder trigger or the Recruiter trigger on the backside. Yep, there's that. That's fine. The Baleful Strix would be a great draw. <laughs> LOL. Gotta say it. Alright, so I get to Baleful Strix, which plays around days and doesn't jam into a Lightning Bolt. They stifle the card draw, whatever, but Strix is also just an excellent card against Delver in general. I'm not firing off the Wasteland because they can stifle the Wasteland, and I'm trying to like really give them nothing. There's the Lightning Bolt, which is why I didn't want to play Soul Herder. They went pretty aggro with that first Sylvan Library. And now I think hope they're kind of suffering for it. So I'm going to waste their green. Because green is the color that actually like plays the game for them. Yeah, there's the Stifle. Like, red is their removal, but uh, green is... Alright, uh, do I play around Daze? They've already played two of them. I can't play around Lightning Bolt anyway. I'm going to go for the Herder. I, don't, I can't let them just sit behind their library forever. They either have Bolt or they don't. Yeah, sure. I guess uh, wasting the Volcanic Island would have made more sense, like assuming Wasteland resolves, which obviously it wasn't going to because they've been sitting on the Stifle forever waiting for a target, um, that like taking them off red is more useful for my Soul Herder line. Uh, I did not play around Halt Reacher, which is not a card that's usually in Rug, but... There it is. More Strix. Bringing Strixie back. So I'm actually deeper in my deck right now than they are, despite them having Sylvan Library. Like I'm 41 cards into my deck, and they're at 43. It's pretty close. Uh, like The Strixes and the Recruiter have all kept up pretty well. And I have my, my entire top end. Both of my four drops are, are in hand right now. Ooh, they went to four.
They're they're digging. Those cards must not have been good. Build turn eight Delver of Secrets. That's right when you want that. Another Strix. Don't mind if I do. I'm happy to trade off with Delver. That that's really not a problem for me. Ooh, Brainstorm's a good one. I'll sit on it for a minute. I'm not going to run it into a stifle. One for one game, turns out. Uh, th this is the difference between turn one Delver and turn eight Delver, by the way, this game we're watching. Like, this is a... Uh, like, if they had a flipped Delver early, this game would have been a totally different animal. But they didn't, so... Instead, they're just playing from behind and slowly bleeding out. Worst of Will is not the worst draw. I'm not, I can't say I'm stoked about it, but not terrible. All right, so I'm just going to pass with Venser up. Like, if Venser can hit a row on the stack, that's pretty good. And I have the Caracas in play, so... Like, even if Uro, even if they stifle my fetch or, or something, then I still uh, get to play. Like, I, I have the Caracas in play and Force of Will in hand. Like there's a lot, a lot of games still here. All right, did you keep Stifle in your hand? They've had a lot of selection so far. Let's see if they would have selected Stifle or not. I didn't think they would. So I'll get Tundra and then Venser this thing on the stack so they don't get the trigger. If they force their hellbent and then they lose anyway. Boom. Lethal. Yep, they, they left that stifle up way too long. We played around it, didn't play into it, and they ended up wasting a lot of tempo trying to stifle me and got punished for it. So Path and Plow both come in. Apparition's pretty good here. I like Plague Engineer quite a bit, just being like sweeping the Delvers and uh, trading with Tarmogoy for both good things. All Breacher is an option, but it dies to everything. Um, I don't think you can count on Peacekeeper in a matchup like this, though. I mean, this is the type of matchup where you'd want Peacekeeper, so maybe I'll think about that a little more. What's not so good here? I don't think Meddling Mage is super important in this matchup because they're going to have like Lightning Bolt and Chain Lightning and Red Blast and just, I think, removing... Oh, uh, take Force of Will definitely comes out, all of them. So that happens first. Then... So I bring those in for the forces. Now Meddling Mage is back on the table. Um, Gilded Drake trading with Uro or Tarmogoyf is pretty hot. I I will admit I don't quite understand when I'm supposed to bring in Gilded Drake. Like the, this is, it feels kind of like Surgical Extraction, where it's like it always can do something, but is it what it's for? And like uh, Gilded Drake with Venser is obviously a combo. Uh, but this particular build doesn't have Baron in it. Also, Flicker Wisp is pretty good with Gilded Drake. But like trading for Delver, you just trade their 3-2 flyer for a 3-3 flyer. And if you're not actively flickering it, that doesn't sound very good. So, uh, Lavinia, do I want you? And Lavinia is probably about as effective as a meddling mage. 
So I think for curve considerations, I, I do want some of those twos back in. And I'll try a Gilded Drake for science, because Tarmogoyf does seem like a hard card to beat. But I'm up to five plows and three apparitions. Uh, maybe I like Hall Breacher better than that. Maybe I like Plague Engineer better than both. Okay, this is what I'm doing. Not sure if, if it's right. There's a lot of options you could play around with here. As long as you have a plan and commit to it, you're probably fine. Ooh, it's an Aether Vile Hand. Do I keep it? I don't keep it. Against the Stifle Wasteland Rug Delver. I will keep this. I'm going to send Soul Herder to the bottom. I don't like this uh, mono non-basic hand. But it is what it is. Okay, that's not a Delver. And I'm going to lead on Caracas, not Tundra. Unless I draw a basic, I'll play any basic. That would be the dream. Okay, cool. So I'm going to get actually basic planes here. So I think that is more important to me than an island in this particular matchup. If this Aether Vial sticks around, we're going to have a really good time. Like this matchup especially is one that struggles with Aether Vial. I'm just ranching with Tarmogoyf. That is what I said, that uh, Tarmogoyf can be a tough one to beat. I'm playing into Force and Negation a little bit by doing it there, but letting them untap gives them like Spell Pierce, Fluster Storm, you know, Brainstorm for an answer. Like all those things are on the table. I couldn't play around that. Please don't have Brazen Borrower. All right. So I don't think current builds of Rug Delver play any one mana answers to Aether Vial. So I'm probably going to get at least a Strix out of this. They can stifle the uh, activation or stifle the... Ooh, uh, do I want to sit on black? or? Is... I think I just want to put in Vial, or put in Strix and see what happens. And because they play Stifle, I should be activating Vial even if I don't have a creature to put in. All right, that's why you Strix first, because then I had information to make the correct land drop. Yeah, like, even if they bolt one of these things, like, I have to get through those bolts eventually. Now they can't force. Alright, what is it? Hooting Mandrels? What you got? What's the play? I can't Apparition a Hooting Mandrels which is pretty good for them, because Apparition answers basically everything else in their deck. Ooh, Wilt. Okay. Interesting they left up red instead of taking me off my mana. ka -chow. All right, so I can get this Aether Violin. That looks like they're holding up stifle to me. I'm just going to get Aether Vial back and get it back to work. It just did nothing for the whole turn cycle. They have Aether. They have Stifle. Like, they specifically left up Red, or left up Volcanic Island when they could have Wastelanded me, and instead they just did nothing with that mana. The basic, the basic island, the Rug Delver basic island. That's technology that's come and gone over the years, and it usually ends up being bad once lists get more stock. All right, there's a stifle target for you, but that means, like we saw last game, that just means they're gonna have to leave up stifle the whole game, and I'm never gonna give them a chance to do it.
stomp. Interesting. All right, well, I'll fetch now since I've been given the chance. Bonecrusher Giant is an exciting card. I have not seen that in Rug Delver before. I've seen it in like some legacy decks, but usually they're weird ones, like uh, Red Stompy or whatever. Not in Honest Delver decks. Alright, well, it's certainly pretty good here. Alright, I'm just... Starting to mess with them, let them know that I'm willing to activate Aether Vial even when I don't have a play. Alright, that gets around days, I love it. So Force of Will is still live. Though I think the forward momentum of searching for something and violing something in this turn is worth going for the better card. Oh yeah, especially Charming Prince. Now we're going off. I guess I should fetch my Swamp while we're at it. Continue playing around Stifle. Get Soul Herder, probably. I like it. I'm not going to block if this thing attacks, but I unless they like rough tumble. Oh, yep, there it is. I was about to say unless they rough tumble, they're not going to attack. So, they had the rough, that's fine. All right. So, Skyclave Apparition can answer uh both of these things actually. Oh, hell yeah. I like to party. Uh, so. I think I should cast Soul Herder and see if that's going to work. And then decide what I want to do with it. All right. Human. And then I'll, at the end of the turn, I'll make my monster grow. And name Giant. Okay, so now that's smaller. Not that that matters. Well, it matters because now Soul Herder can trade with it in combat. All right, not anymore. Just working through these, these one for ones. All right, now it's time to draw a recruiter. Oh, the backup engineer. I like that. Let's get in here, and I'm going to cast Engineer and leave up Aether Vial. Uh, I'm going to name Giant again, and flicker it. I'm naming Giant, so I'm not I don't necessarily have to trade off with it. Like if it's a 4-3, my life total is getting pretty low that I'm just going to trade. Do I want to go to 6 against Rugged Over? Probably not. All right, I'll apparition this thing. They can stifle the exile trigger. But then I can still block if I want to, and Apparition trades with the Giant, though I get blown out by Lightning Bolt if I do that. I'll just take the, the Death Touch block. I'm not going to play into a Lightning Bolt. 
Okay, that didn't matter. Okay. I am ahead, but only barely. In we go. Threaten Aether Vial activations. Uh-oh. This is a scary spot for them to have Uro. Clothis. I don't like that either. Alright. Uh, Soul Herder is a good draw. Another Apparition is a good draw. Venser plays. I mean, I don't love it, but it's fine. That is among the best possible. So I'm going to fetch and see if they want to stifle it. Give them the option, even though it's awful to do that. But it is soul herder time. Ah, uh, shit. I should have done that the other way. Oh, no, they don't have red mana up. It doesn't matter. Stifle gets me either way here. Uh, yeah, if they had red mana up, I should have cast Recruiter and then filed in Soul Herder. Okay. All right. Uh, get ri I'm just going to get rid of Clothis. It might be better to just let them drain my life and keep the cards coming with Recruiter. All right. Yeah, I, I'm not sure if that was the correct play, but it's certainly the one that I made. All right. Um, now I'm going to need another draw. Uh, I don't love that, but I will deploy it. Okay, now I'm in some trouble because I can't really afford to go to three against the Lightning Bolt theme deck. But if I block, they get a 3-3, three, three, and if I block here, I lose my chain. Um, Do I have any way to gain life in the deck? There's the Charming Prince. Yeah, I think I need to just put myself into bolt range to play to my outs here. That's not one of them. Okay, I'm going to have to block this turn. Obviously, I'm a three. And I think that blocking with Recruiter is the, the correct block. So, Flicker Wisp. All right, I'm going to block like this. Uh, this gives me better top decks to actually win the game, but like th I think this is the play to win versus play to not lose block. So this makes um, Flicker Wisp good. So I think I want a Vial on 4 and 1 on 2. I right, found Recruiter. Let's see if we can make it sing. Please don't have Stifle. All right, I went up to four like I'm supposed to. Then I can Charming Prince. Okay, how does this work? I did exactly what I was supposed to do. Now I have to figure out how it works. Um, so if I get Charming Prince, I blink Recruiter. Recruiter comes back in my end step, gets Flicker Wisp, or gets Palace Jailer. Though, I feel like I want Flicker Wisp. And I definitely want Charming Prince. That's step one. Yes, file this in. If 
if they have bolt, I'm dead anyway, so I, I just can't play around creature removal. Alright, so this comes in. Yes. I think I get Venser actually this time. Or there's not going to be a next time, right? Uh, so. No, it's Palace Jailer. It's got to be. All right, I want to see if Delver flips, and then I'll fire in the. Delver flipped Revealing Brainstorm, so. I'm going to do this now before they can stifle it. Yeah, that that was a tricky turn that I'm not sure I played correctly. I mean, I'm just dead to Lightning Bolt, and this Brainstorm's pretty scary. If the Brainstorm doesn't get there, there's a pretty good chance, though. Okay, so I am double blocking the illusion and chumping Tarmogoyf. They actually, I think, I think they should. I guess I does. I don't know. I was gonna say I think they should leave me with. Uh, Palace Jailer and take the Charming Prince, but I actually don't know about that. But Charming Prince is how I gain life, which I don't know, may or may not matter. If I can flicker Charming Prince to get out of bolt range, I'll feel pretty good. Okay, so always yield to trigger abilities from either vial. And this one is always no from this Aether vial. And then this one, okay, so. Stay on four forever, and then you're going to be a yes. Hey, that's not bad. Uh, I'm going to take a draw in my end step with my monarch and see what happens. I have two Aether Vials. I can still do a lot in the end step. Fuck yes. All right, so I can plow my own creature to not be dead. Uh, so I'm going to block Tarmogoyf with Recruiter of the Guard, then Vile and Flicker with Bouncing Recruiter of the Guard. And I just have to... Like, the Plow can answer the Uro. If I need to. I hope I don't need to. All right, so block here. And vial this in. Flicker you. All right, that's out of here. Burrow's coming back. I'm not going to plow it right away because uh, being dead to bolt. When I have this plow in hand, like that, there's there's more to do here. Like plowing my own uh, Flicker Wisp or Charming Prince to literally not die. And I can deal with these 6-6s six other ways, I guess. If I must. Okay, so this comes back. Yes. I think I just get Fencer. Do I get another Recruiter? Does that do anything? I could get Peacekeeper and make them have two bolts. Um, the Prince can get me out of range. Like, Venser I can Violin now, which there is some enjoyment of. Princes can flicker each other, but I don't think that actually does anything. Um, I think I somehow just want... No, I want Peacekeeper. Let's worry about as little as possible. Right, always know. 
We're going to be on three and four the rest of the game here. I'll play my land. I might as well attack for three. It is not my plan for anyone else to get to attack for a long time now. Then check what the Monarch has to offer. Nothing great. And... I guess I want to vial this in before they have their, another chance to draw Stifle. Right, let's keep the peace. So now if they draw Lightning Bolt, they have to decide if they want to hit Peacekeeper or my face with it. Uh, Stomp makes it very easy to decide. <laughs> Fuck. That card's really good. So I can plow my Peacekeeper. No, I think plowing Uro is going to be more important. Bummer. That was a blowout. Exactly Stomp is like the card that they... Oh, I need to plow Uro before combat. So exactly Stomp is the card that they would need to not kill me. But kill... Alright. They got this one. I need to make time for game three. Okay, so they did have Force of Wills after all that. Um, the Gilded Drakes are a bit more interesting now. Um, are, they have Tarmogoyf and Uro. Why don't I have Rest in Peace in my deck? So Rest in Peace is in. Uh, Gilded Drake. Stomp is such a good card. Wow, the Bone Crusher Giant. I like that a lot. Appreciate their technology, even if it beats you. The Lavinia is just sort of a generically hateful permanent, messes with their forces. Uh, it does die to Red Blast, which we saw at least two of. Maybe a Hall Breacher isn't great because they they have the red blasts and the force or and the the bolts and the stomps and Hall Breacher is just pretty fragile though it is a complete blowout if it ever happens. Do you play for the blowout or do you play for the average type of game? A meddling mage naming Stomp is actually pretty powerful. Is Stomp a card? Is that how this works? Can you name Stomp, or do you have to name Bone Crusher Giant? I don't actually know how that works. Like, Stomp is not a magic card that exists. So, rest in peace in. Though, naming Lightning Bolt is worth a lot. Naming Rough Tumble is a lot. Rough is a card, I'm fairly confident. Uh, yeah, maybe Hall Breacher is just not where I want to be. Okay, I'm going to try this. Got to win this one fast. Eight minutes on the clock. Nope. Yep. Uh, so I'm going to just play Flooded Strand and pass. Uh, I could fetch to get ahead of Stifle right now. But I kind of want them to sit on Stifle. Because my hand isn't really coming out blazing fast here. Alright, they had the Delver hand. So, I get to have a pretty solid brainstorm here. I found Aether Vial. Put those two back. Get my planes. Alright, let's see if they have the days. No days, no problems. Alright, that flipped immediately, revealing Stifle. Alright, that was actually a rough time for them to find Stifle. So, I have uh, five plows in the deck, the four plows in the path. So getting the pressure off from this Delver is going to be step one, like it always is in Delver matchups. I 
right so i can if nothing else transpires here or nothing else materializes i guess is the word i was looking for i can waste them in their upkeep and that gets the stifle out of their hand and uses their own mana to do it Okay, Stifle is accounted for. Apparition answers the Delver. Eventually, I'm going to take a bunch of damage from it first. Yes. Okay, um... Do you have another stifle? Do I want to play around it? I think now that I have the prince, I can slow down a little bit. And it, I guess if I lose my Aether Vial this turn, then it's pretty bad. But I don't want to get dazed. I wonder if I'm supposed to just gain three life. Is that what this game's going to come down to? I guess I'm going to be at 10, fetch, fetch, 8. Like 6 and 7 is when I get really worried. Yeah, so I'm going to fetch in the end step, see if they fight over it. And then I'll, I'll prince. Because at this point I have Vile going nuts to their 5 cards in hand. If one of them stifle, that's not even that bad. I think I actually do just want to gain 3 life. Just going to cushion up here. Fill a fort. Ooh, I like that. So they can stomp. I'm going to fetch. I'm going to play Plague Engineer. Basically, it has to get Tundra. I'm going to name Human with this. All right, so they, they'll probably Stomp Plague Engineer in the end step if they have Stomp. I'm just trying to Lightning Rod. Uh, I don't want them to Stomp Skyclave Apparition basically is, is my goal here. Trying to get some removal out of the way. Yeah, I wish I had a flicker wisp or a flicker effect here, but of course I don't. I also did end up playing into days by playing the Plague Engineer. I think I can afford to take two and go to nine this turn. Bro, all right. If they're going big and they're going small here. I had to frantically adjust to a Delver, but then they also have Uro. And that's the, the story of this matchup. Uh, I'm not going to put in Apparition just in case they Tarmogoyf post-combat. Alright, now I'm going to be pretty well exposed to Rough Tumble. But, I mean, that's a one of, and I'm pretty far ahead on board. Alright, that was a good one. An attack first. I don't want them to know that I'm Strixing in case they have like removal in combat that they want to use. And Strix survives Rough Tumble. Or Rough deals damage to creatures without flying. It's Red Blast. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that certainly hints to me that they might be roughing it up here pretty soon. If they just spent a card to deal with the 
though that doesn't necessarily mean rough's coming because uh that card also trades with uro but okay yeah there it is i'm shocked Clothis, yikes all right rug delver so good all right always yield Oh god. Play into days or a way to turn. I don't think I have the life points to wait a turn. I'm just gonna fucking go. Alright, let's draw a sweet three drop off the monarch. Nope. And the drain game begins. Plus they have Uro. Yeah, I don't think I'm winning this. Palace Jailer was a good draw, though. Oh, didn't Uro. They could have, and they didn't. That tells me that they just don't care about that. All right, I'm just going to keep just eating cards onto the board. The name Human again. Human gets Delver, and in case they have Young Pyromancer, it also gets that. They're just stomping my face, yeah. Oh, do they have Bolt also? Alright, yep, just burnt out. That's why they didn't make Uro. That makes perfect sense. And then I'm dead to Clothis. Alright, got crushed by the best deck in Legacy. No surprise there. I imagine that matchup's really hard. Like... I said that this is kind of like Death and Taxes, and in some ways that's true, but Death and Taxes is pretty good against Delver, and I imagine this is bad against Delver. Uh, just the way that removal lines up, uh, no Mother of Runes is a big game. Um, just generally taking longer to get hooks in, no Thalia, not really a dedicated mana denial, just the two Wastelands. So there's a couple important axes where this deck is much worse against Rug Delver than Death and Taxes would be. Uh, turning on Red Blast, a big one. So, yeah. And their build was really good. Th those Bone Crusher Giants were phenomenal against specifically what I'm doing. I'm not sure they'd be great everywhere else, but they were very good in exactly that matchup. Bummer. 5 Dream is dead. Let's play for 4 1. I'm on the draw. No Aether Vial, but I can't turn down a hand like this. Just all three basics. Force of Will back up. Love it. Back in 2012, we were playing decks that just had hands like this. <laughs> they didn't even have Aether Vial to rip. Marsh Flats. I don't expect Marsh Flats to stifle me, but I'm not going to give them the chance to play into it. Scared ya. I'm just playing around Stifle here. I wish I had my own. Everybody fetches into Flooded Strand. Uh, if you're trying to trick people with your Delver deck, oh, is this Reanimator? Oh, okay, yeah, whatever. No, so flooded or uh, wooded foothills used to be the fetch land that can trick people into fetching, but now it's flooded strand. Like everybody knows that wooded foothills is a rug Delver card, but flooded strand could be anything. Him to Tarok. Hmm. Resolves. Oh, yep, just easily hit both my creatures. Cool. <laughs> Didn't hit the vial. Ooh. So these two lands are I think I'm about to fetch the swamp. So the swamp can go back in. I don't know if I want both vials or more lands. Yeah, I want both vials. So fetch the swamp. Keep force blue card available. All right, let's set up for this long game. Looks like we're playing against dead Gael. Unless there are blue lands that we just haven't seen yet. But this looks pretty dead guy, which is funny because they are the two color version of our three color deck. 
All right. Yeah, hitting the planes kind of sucks, but I'm not going to force that because force loses the brainstorm and like brainstorm is one of the cards that I would want to force to protect. Just going to hang out on Aether Vial over here. So if this is Dead Gael, they are a Wasteland deck. And i got to be careful with my white sources moving forward. Because I have all these great white cards in my hand. That was actually a good card. I'm, just... I'm now in the unenviable position of needing both lands and creatures. In the Plow specifically is like a reason to need lands because... Uh, Alright, now I don't care. Glad I didn't force the first one, because they all are coming anyway. Yes. Yes. Baleful Strix. Okay. Found the white source. Now their desk guard is dead. And uh, my Aether Vials are primed to go off. I just need to find something to do with them. So now we're in the spot where, like, drawing something like uh, Recruiter is insane. Well, Force of Will is basically the worst draw left in the deck. God, what's happening? Are they activating Castle Lockthwain with three cards in their hand? Doesn't look like it. Oh, they're clinging. Yep, deal. Yeah, they've had this the super empty your hand version of their their deck and not the aggressive half of the deck. But if they find a Stoneforge Mystic. Uh, it can start to be in trouble pretty quickly. Honestly, just if they don't destroy my Aether Vials, we're going to get along. But that is a, a big ask. If they're capable of it, they're definitely going to do it. This is the kind of card that would scare someone in a position like this. Like, I shredded your hand to zero, but you have functionally three, five, eight mana in play for whatever you draw. Right, I'm just going to know both of these vials. Two and three cover most of my bases. Basically, the nightmare scenario is I draw a four, but I can't use it. Right, they're not even bothering to waste me because of the aether vials. Aha! Can't inquisition this. They probably had a good guess that that wasn't going to do anything because, oh fuck, that exiles Aether Vial. Come on! And like, it minus ones to do it. Oh, they didn't even bother. Wow. That's a mistake. Please, deck. Please let me punish this. There, that is a creature, I suppose. Soul Herder has the modal abilities of being both the best and worst creature in the deck. Hopefully they don't realize that Kaya can exile Aether Vial. Another Wasteland. Let's exile more shit. Thank you. This goes off at 5. Uh, and I have 6 cards. So they can 12 me. All right. Yeah, so instead of having zero Aether Vials in play, I have two Aether Vials in play. And I am grateful for that. I don't think I just jam in Soul Herder here. Maybe I do. Yeah, I mean... If they have removal, it's going to get me eventually. Like, I can't, like, play around removal. And I can at least attack Kaya. All right, you got me. Aha! Put a counter on Soul Herder. Gotcha. That is another damage from Kaya, though. Um, 
Recruiter of the Guard. Alright, I'll take a Strix. Probably should have just cast it with my mana, like a normal person. Leave my Vial available, where, where I can do tricks with it. But, okay. Yeah, this the way that this game is played out is weird. I'm like almost certainly going to lose to this Kaya. Oh, they figured it out. Bummer. <laughs> uh. Smallpox. Oh, you're a smallpox deck. That's messed up. Okay, that makes more sense with how this game played out. Discard Plow, Sack, Flooded Strand, and Baleful Strix. I'm sacking the Flooded Strand and discarding the Plow because uh, they have this Wasteland and I have no way to get white sources anyway. Like if I had basic planes, I probably would have let my Swamp go. Now three is the important number. There's that again. I mean, they're pretty close to Hellbent, but now they know about Aether Vial. Uh, it sucks that they read their card right when I started drawing relevant spells. Though, is this creatures? Yeah, okay, bummer. Really? <laughs> All right, I, I'm pretty sure I'm dead. Like, I just don't have a way out of this game from here. I guess it's like land, land, skyclave apparition. And that's my whole plan. Oh, a second wasteland, cool. So now they can waste my fetch and then waste what comes out of it if they want to get super aggressive. I guess finding like even Baleful Strix, Recruiter of the Guard, anything to pressure Kaya helps. That card's very good in this matchup, but not on this board. I have 12 cards in exile, so I'm actually just dead to Kaya. Like there is, I don't believe there's an out in my deck to Kaya on five from this position. Wow, absolutely destroyed. Smallpox decks are built to defeat creatures, and it seems like they've done their job here. Yeah, I'm taking 28 from Kaya next turn. Look who decided to join the party. Yep, too late. Okay, that's fine. Uh, now I know what I'm playing against. Him to Tarox, discard spells, lots of creature removal. What does that mean? Uh, Skyclave Apparition is probably good. Uh, they did a lot of fetching, but I don't know if Opposition Agent, that means Opposition Agent should come in or not. I can't rely on counter spells to do anything, basically. And there are dead draws, like I just want to play to the board as much as possible. Uh, Castle Lockthwain. I think it says draw a card on it. Not put it in your hand. I don't think I'm going to need Swords to Plowshares for this matchup. I mean, some number of Force Will might be fine, but it's just such a bad top deck. Does Rest in Peace matter? Probably not. Just Mono Creatures? Is that the plan? Uh, Peacekeeper should not be in my deck. Force of Will is better than Peacekeeper. I, I am pretty confident about that. Maybe now that I know what I'm doing, I'm supposed to just get up under them and protect my creatures with Force of Will. Does that make sense? Um, Plague Engineer is mostly a 3-mana 2-2. Two, two. I haven't seen any creatures out of them. A Meddling Mage. Yeah, I, I just... Yeah, I, I think just... Knowing what I'm playing against is going to be a difference maker here. Is Force of Negation better than Of Will? Because I didn't see any creatures. 
and I didn't see any instants. And Force of Negation is actually hard castable sometimes. Okay, I'm going to do this. All right, let's go. Keep. Just going to keep anything that curves out in any sort of reasonable fashion. And I can get a basic island and have basic planes. Charming Prince can scry to get things rolling, protect myself with force of negation. Really wish I had Aether Vial there, but oh well. Kaya makes Aether Vial pretty awkward. Apparition's a pretty good card for the matchup. Scry. Uh, Marsh Flats gets the basic swamp. I like that. I don't need a second Apparition, and it doesn't matter because I'm going to shuffle it away anyway. So I don't really want to pitch Soul Herder. I want to use Soul Herder. But if they play like Smallpox this turn, I'm obviously going to have to crack it off. I might let them him me and just play the numbers. I guess in the specific situation of Swords to Plowshares or Fatal Push. Force of Will would be better in the spot. Alright, well. That's not a card that I can beat from this position. So I'll just counter it. Shuffle first. Is there any reason to like jump these princes around? Like you can play around sweepers with two princes by having them blink each other, but I don't need to play around sweepers right now. I need to make sure my I draw well. Old Breacher and Wasteland. A bottom wasteland. I'll keep Hall Breacher just because it's a it's a another creature on curve. If they have Kaya this turn, or some permanent, I have the Apparition. All Breacher having Flash is kind of nice too. Plays around Sorcery Speed Removal. Draw a card. Yes, Lockthwain does say draw a card on it. Yeah, we're basically just playing Limited. Or I am. I don't know what my opponent's up to, but I'm playing limited. Okay, uh, my hand is empty. They took the second white source and the double white card to cast it. And Hall Breacher plays really well into discard too, because it incentivizes them to cast a discard spell. And then that spell's gone because I have a flash creature. Plague Engineer, that's going to name human or noble even. <laughs> Probably human though. All right, yeah, that's a good card. They still have three cards in their hand over there. It's a lot. Uh. I'll offer the trade or offer the damage. Uh, Apparition's actually pretty good because uh, if I draw any fetch land, I can clear the way and crunch for a million. And smallpox is pretty bad for them to cast here. Oh, Jesus. All right. Well, then. That's pretty strong. Good thing I boarded out all re my removal. <laughs> Human wizard. All right, so I'll attack. Offer the trade. Yep, deal. I'm going to Meddling Mage Swords to Plowshares.
Because if they uh, smallpox here, it costs them their plague engineer. I just don't want them to be able to freely remove my stuff and, and continue to party. They have the third engineer. Oh, they did smallpox. Fearless. I'm going to sack my... Uh, planes probably because baleful strix is or, so i have what uh two meddling mages one charming prince and four baleful strix in the deck all right yeah i'm gonna sack the planes which may seem crazy but baleful strix is the draw that i have the most of that's pretty good from hellbent but i guess we're not really hellbent because they have locked wayne yeah, that castle is going to bury me. Aether Vile a little late to the party here. Just Kaya instantly. Oh, nope. All right. Another Plague Engineer. Is it still going to be on human? Or are they going to name Elemental? Get ahead of the Flicker Wisp. They're thinking about it. Do they know more about this deck than I do? Because I don't even know. I maybe you name Bird. Ooh, Bird would be really smart. Spirit. Okay. I don't think there are any X1 spirits in the deck. Nice. Alright, my mana's back on. So let's uh let's do this thing. A second lock Thwain. Okay, so drawing something like Recruiter right now would be pretty great deck. You don't have Kaya. Okay. Maybe they'll accidentally kill themselves with Lock Twain. Uh, so close. Hopefully they just have Inquisition of Kozilek. So I want to fetch to thin out lands from my deck, but I also don't want to play into wastelands. So that's kind of the the dance I'm doing here. But now I'm in the position, I guess it depends on if they play a discard spell, but land and creature are both good draws. It's like wasteland is a bad draw, but any other land is good. Why are they fetching right now? Do you have disenchant? I can't deal with that. I'm not equipped. Oh, are they just clinging again? It's happening. Okay, yeah, it is cling to dust. All right, yeah, they're just drawing some extra cards. All right, deck. Well. Guess I will expose myself. I'm going to name Swords to Plowshares again. Just trying to think of like what cards they would have in their deck still. I guess I could have named Kaya, but I, I'm sure they play more Plows than Kaya's. They're going to play Kaya right now. Oh, okay. The fourth plague engineer. All right, so if there's a game three, I need my removal still for these engineers. Curse scroll, hot. Oh, don't do more. You also have Kaya. Oh no, they're just activating curse scroll. That's fine. Okay, uh, smallpox entered the revealed zone. So their last card in hand is smallpox. Uh, this vial's going up to four. I don't care if I draw a land. Okay, so uh white blue name smallpox. Smallpox. 
And then I want to be the monarch on my turn. I probably could blow them out in combat, but being the monarch is more important. I'm going to take the one on human. This curse scroll is really good, though. Like, we could be in some trouble to that. Okay. Oh, wow. And they just take the monarch. Wow, that was fucked up! All right, now I lose, for sure. They take the monarch on top of all this other stuff. Yeah, drawing spot removal. Oh. <laughs> and they get their plague engineer back. I'm so dead. It's not even close. Yeah, this deck is just like tailor built to destroy my deck. Should I go up to five just to fuck with them? Nope. All right, we're dead. On board. Just one, two, three, four, five, six. Curse scroll, four plague engineers, smallpox. This is not a matchup that is reasonably winnable. Okay, so started off strong, fell off at the end, lost to Rug Delver, lost to uh, Pox. So one of those decks is pretty is the best deck in Legacy, and one of them is like not a real deck, but we're never gonna beat. So got a lot of exciting lines out of there like knowing what to leave aether vial on how to play to your top decks are all important skills with this deck knowing what to name with meddling mage goes a long way um the soul herder is pretty sweet um i wish that there was another way to go off with gilded drake i know a lot of these decks play baron the three mana baron from dominaria and uh, that card is, is a pretty sick card advantage engine that I wish I was playing with. Um, as far as the Uro metagame goes, we struggled with Uro when we also struggled with the early game, like specifically Rug Delver. Like we played against that one Uro deck. I guess we did split the difference in two games we actually played, and then they got mana screwed in the third one. So I might want more real answers to Uro in this deck. Um, Baron is is another bounce spell for Uro. Uh, I I think I just want a Baron in the deck somewhere. Maybe over the the main deck Hall Breacher, or maybe over the I I don't know. Uh, you'd have to mess around with the numbers a little bit. Like I I do want the main deck Plague Engineer. Do you need two Soul Herders? I don't know. Um. Peacekeeper is pretty unique for what it does. Like the matchups you want Peacekeeper, it's going to be very important. It's pretty fragile though in a deck without Mother of Runes or any way to really protect it. So that's a little bit awkward. I've really missed Mother of Runes in this deck. Like the the way that this deck just plays this creature prison style deck with no with no mom is kind of interesting. Uh which you know I'm sure like to play the Mother of Runes, you'd have to lose like Brainstorm or Force of Will, probably, which is a different set of problems. And the reason you play this deck over something like Death and Taxes or Humans is Brainstorm and Force of Will. So definitely uh, tricky. These numbers are tricky. Um, but I do want Baron in here somewhere. Uh, the mana felt mostly pretty good. Uh, it's It's hard to get good mana out of the esper mana base while playing cards that are like blue white and black and white white and blue blue all at the same time so uh the mana is gonna get you sometimes with this deck you're very susceptible to wasteland you're very susceptible to back to basics uh you're pretty heavily in on this aether vial if you don't draw one or you draw one late or they destroy it the game gets much harder so there's a lot of a lot of things about this deck that would make me not really want to play it in a Grand Prix, but I do think it's very cool. And I'm sure I didn't play optimally because it's a very hard deck to play also. Uh, so those are my thoughts. Uh, get a Baron in here somewhere. Uh, Opposition Agent can go from the 75. Like, what is this card even for? Uh, I, I, I guess it's Elves and Maverick probably specifically, but... Seriously, uh, you have three Plague Engineers. You're going to beat those decks. So Opposition Agent, get out of here. Put in Baron. 
uh, figure out how to fit Baron in the main deck, move something to the sideboard. Uh, that that's what I would do with this deck, um, and it's also super customizable, like for your own metagame. Like there can't be a stock list for a deck like this because, like, if nobody in your local meta plays Eldrazi or Goblins or whatever, you can get rid of Peacekeeper for Baron. If everybody does, maybe you want two Peacekeepers. Maybe you want two Plague Engineers main. Maybe Soul Herder's bad. Maybe Palace Jailer's bad. Like that, all of these cards can be played around with between the main deck sideboard and just not even in the deck. Uh, the only ones you really need are Baleful Strix, Aether Vile, and Recruiter of the Guard. Everything else uh, is seasoned to taste. So those are my thoughts on the deck. This was a lot of fun to play. Uh, it was a lot of work. Um, I, I wouldn't pick this for myself. It, it just seems like it's trying to do what Death in Texas does and what like a mid-range blue deck does and just sort of like smushed in the middle of both doing kind of a unique thing that's not at good not as good at prison as death and taxes and not in, as good at being a mid-range deck as just like a uh, shark still or something but trying to do both and in sometimes that's good and sometimes it's just weird but all right i've talked for a long time uh this deck was a lot of fun uh thank you david for submitting it uh, i hope it was helpful watching me play it get a baron in there and thanks for watching. Everybody make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.